The time has come, pirates. Load your guns, sharpen your swords, and raise your lanterns up high. It's time for our most epic adventure yet, The Legend of the Veil. What's up guys, Blue Like Rock here, and welcome to my comprehensive guide for the brand new Pirate Legend Voyage, The Legend of the Veil. Vale. I put a lot of work into making this video as good as it can be, so make sure to leave a like if you found it informative, and consider subscribing if you want to see more Sea of Thieves guides, update concepts, and lore analysis videos. Without any further ado, enjoy the video. To make this guide as accessible as possible, it has been split into separate sections, each one going over a different map type that you will encounter on the voyage, leading up to the final Ghostly Garrison's battle. The Legend of the Veil vale is split into three chapters, two of which are completely randomized, so keep that in mind when watching this guide. When you start the voyage, the Pirate Lord will greet you on your ship and tell us our objective, to retrieve the Lost Veil Stones for the Veil of the Ancients. This is the Veil of the Ancients. It holds the power to open a permanent doorway to the Sea of the Damned. With this power, the boundary between our Sea of Thieves and the Sea of the Damned is no more, and memories can become real. However, to use this power, the Veil must be reunited with three stones that were taken from it long ago. There are others seeking the stones, so you will need to act fast. Retrieve the Veil stones and I'll make sure the Veil of the Ancients never falls into the wrong hands. The Haunted Islands encounter will begin with a page being added to the quest book, telling us to find Belle on one of the Sea of Thieves' biggest islands. Kraken's Fall, Old Faithful Isle, Thieves' Haven, etc, etc. Finding her at the landmark described in your book. This island teems with memories. The lantern will reveal them. Lighting the braziers will guide you to the ancient ritual site. Here you will find the Veilstone. I fear the Servant is aware of my presence. Keep an eye out for phantoms. She will give you the Ferryman's Lantern once you find her, and it is now your job to light all of the ancient statues hidden all across this island. One tip that I can give for this step of the quest is right after you light a brazier, the statue lifts up the lit flame and reveals the locations of every statue you have yet to light for around 10 seconds with these ghostly beacons in the sky. If you miss the window and are still a bit lost, don't worry. If the ferryman's lantern is raised, you can find these statues relatively easily by looking out for the big ghostly shockwaves that they give off. Once all of the statues are lit, a giant beacon will form in a big open area, leading you to a ritual site led by the ancient priest. Here, we come face to face with the ancients for the very first time. Before we get ambushed by reaper phantoms that are also after the stone. Teaming up with the ancients, we have to fight our way through waves and waves of these phantoms eventually defeating the Soul Flame Captain, leading this crew of phantoms. As the Captain is defeated, the Ancient Priest congratulates us for our work and rewards us with the Veilstone, along with some Athena's fortune loot that is dropped by the Soul Flame Captain. I sought to reconnect the two worlds once. I now know they must remain parted. You must have balance. 
a world of the living and a world of the dead. Protect the veil. Suds is a character we haven't heard from in quite a while, but now he has returned to help us seek out the Veil Stones. However, instead of just telling us the locations of them, he has some puzzles for us to solve. When you see a page that looks like this, head to the island that is shown on the map, meeting up with Suds well, at the hello. location described. He will give you a secret message that he was given by one of his comrades. And it is up to us to decipher this message in a section that I like to call Suds's Coded Maps. There's not a moment to waste. Go find the stone. The servant knows too much, but how? I wish I knew. There are three map types that you can encounter, each one different with every voyage you do picture maps, lying maps, and zoom maps. Starting off with picture maps. These are a bit tricky if you don't know the Sea of Thieves like the back of your hand. We're given a series of drawings that all point to one island. For example, this map here. The drawings on the left page are all landmarks from that particular island, and the right page shows where on that island you're supposed to dig marked by the ancient symbol. I highly recommend really taking your time with this one and looking really closely, even on the world map itself, because you may be able to even find some of those landmarks before you even travel there to look. You may even surprise yourself at how well you know these islands, even if you are a bit newer to the game. One huge tip I have for these is to remember that the island that you are heading towards will be within five nautical miles of where you found Suds. So don't worry about the islands in the Shores of Plenty if you found him at Kraken's Fall. One thing I do want to point out, these maps can be at any island, even in the Devil's Roar. So if you meet Suds on the eastern parts of the Ancient Isles or the Wilds, Make sure to check those Devil's Roar Islands as well, because chances are you might find your island there. Lying Maps These ones are daunting at first to look at. A map of an island with all these symbols on it. But if we take a step back, these symbols are all cave paintings that are on that particular island and our job is to find the one symbol that isn't on that island, and to dig at that exact symbol's site. The main piece of advice that I have for this one is make yourself a path. For instance, start at the south point of this island, and run in a direct path all the way through, hitting each symbol as you run, stopping at the lying symbol, and digging. But if you're lazy and don't want to do that, there's always resources like the Rare Thief interactive map uh, that show a map of all the symbols on an island. Hey, nothing against that. Pirates are resourceful after all. Zoom maps. These maps will require you to really know the Sea of Thieves Islands since the map that you're given is a typical X marks the spot map of the island you need to go to, but it is super zoomed in, which makes knowing the geometry and landmarks of each island much more important. Like this map here, for example. At first glance, based on the color of grass... Alright, so this gotta be an island in the Shores of Plenty, or the Ancient Isles, so it's bit greener. Uh, maybe Cannon Cove? Or Crook's Hollow? Actually, it's Shipwreck Bay. How do I know this? The Wreck of the Black Witch can be seen right here. It's a bit subtle at first, but it is actually the main tip that I have for this particular map. 
look for those subtle details in the map and get really close to the islands. Literally. But besides that, these maps are the easiest that I found out of Suds' coded maps. Since they are the closest to our traditional X marks the spot maps. Whichever map you take, you will end up digging up an ancient chest, which houses two Athena relics and the Veil Stone, which when inserted into the Veil of the Ancients, will start the next chapter of the voyage. When this is all over, share a grog and you can tell me all about your adventures. But now, we must find the next Veil Stone. The Shipwreck Graveyard is our chance to play detective and uncover the secrets of these sunken ships. Our quest book is updated with a page telling us to go to a location near an island, where when sailing close by to that area, we can see the familiar flock of seagulls flying above a sunken ship. Diving down, however, we are greeted with an entire fleet of sunken ships. Our objective here is to find a key hidden among the furniture and trinkets in the ships. It can be literally anywhere, so my advice is to leave no stone unturned. Unlike other sunken ships, in these nearly everything can be interacted with in some way. Moving paintings, shifting books in a bookshelf, even sliding a rug out of the way. Along the way, we can discover various items, like mermaid gems, gold trinkets, and gold pouches, until we finally discover the key amongst the wreckage. If you haven't noticed yet, each of these wrecked ships has a name, and once you discover the key, head to the ship that is named in your quest book to unlock the captain's cabin which houses the Veilstone, along with some Athena loot. Ooh, shiny. Finally, is the battle against the ghostly garrison. Once two chapters have been completed, consisting of any of the two of three possible paths that I mentioned so far, we're met again by the Pirate Lord, who tells us that the Servant of the Flame has taken the final Veilstone and has brought a powerful sea fort from the Sea of the Damned into our world. Our objective here is to smash that new fort to pieces and retrieve the final Veilstone. Sailing towards the location mentioned in our quest book, we can see a monstrous green tornado of ghostly energy. And with a flash of green lightning, three emplacements appear. These emplacements are giving the growing storm its power. So using our cannons, we can destroy these emplacements to weaken the storm. But guarding them are a fleet of ghost ships, and the phantoms on board those ships don't appear to be too happy with us. Each of the three emplacements take five cannonball hits each to destroy. And once they crumble, we can hop onto these forts and claim two storage crates if we're running a bit low on supplies. Because if we learned anything from Captain Flameheart... Your supplies must be dwindling by now! Once all three of the emplacements have been destroyed, the raging ghostly tornado finally dies down, and the final, giant glowing sea fort is revealed. Our objective here is to destroy that fort and claim the riches inside. To do that, we have to target the glowing points of the fort. Those are the weak points. Each one is relatively easy to destroy, but there are a total of 7 to 8 weak points you have to hit before you're able to board. And once all of the weak points are destroyed, the final Veilstone is yours to claim. And 
a chest of legends. Oh yes, did I mention that you get a guaranteed chest of legends from the final veil stone? Placing this final veil stone inside of the Veil of the Ancients brings the pirate lord back to our ship, where he takes the powered up Veil of the Ancients and promises to never let it get in the wrong hands. Now whether or not we should trust him is another thing, because he did just snatch it from under our noses. And what if he decides to use that power for himself to get all the glory? And with that, congratulations, you have just beaten the Legend of the Veil. Vale. I hope you enjoyed this comprehensive guide for the Legend of the Veil. Vale. This was extremely difficult for me to make, and I tried my absolute best to explain each aspect of this voyage as clear and as concise as I could. But if I did end up missing anything, or if you have any further questions, feel free to leave a comment on this video, or join my Discord server if you need help with a particular map. I will do my absolute best to help all of you complete this truly legendary tale, because this is something that I think every person that plays Sea of Thieves needs to experience. Thank you guys for watching, and as always, I will see you out on the seas.